So it turns out that quite often in an organic reaction, uh, in a mechanism, the steps are often reduced down to what's called nucleophilic attack. So where a nucleophile attacks an electrophile, i.e. where a nucleophile attaches to an electrophile. So we've got some terminology to know, and a nucleophile is an electron pair donor. It is somewhat synonymous with a Lewis base. So, and to act as these electron pair donors, you've got to have a non-ponding pair of electrons, a lone pair of electrons. And generally, if you have a negative charge, you're going to be stronger than if you're neutral. So if we look at the examples down below here, so I can see we've got a strong nucleophile on the right here and one negative charge, but we have a lone pairs of electrons. So we can act as a Lewis base, a nucleophile, and the negative charge makes it strong. So uh, at least stronger than when it's neutral. So on the right hand side, it's a weak nucleophile. So we still have a lone pair so we can act as a nucleophile, but without a negative charge, not so strong. So we find out there are a few nucleophiles that even when they're neutral are somewhat strong, but by and large, uh, the dichotomy is that if you're neutral, no charge, you're a weak nucleophile, and if you've got a negative charge, you're a strong nucleophile. And again, we'll see some exceptions, but a, a couple chapters from now, we'll learn how to kind of rank nucleophiles, just like we did ranking bases a while back. So whereas the nucleophile is the electron pair donor, the electrophile is going to be the electron pair acceptor. And whereas the nucleophiles tend to be electron rich, often as evidenced by a negative charge, so your electrophiles are going to be electron poor, and typically they have to at least have a partial positive charge. So we see three common examples here, and the one I'll focus on in the middle here is the carbocation here. So in our carbocation carbon here, one right in the center, uh, one, it has a positive formal charge, so it's very electron deficient, but two, uh, it only has three bonds, and carbon with three bonds has an empty p orbital, so, and it would really love it if somebody came and made a fourth bond to him. That's what makes him such a good electrophile, a good Lewis acid, uh, almost synonymous with that uh, in this case. So that one's easy to recognize. Now, it turns out an alkyl halide here, so say we had this molecule right here, this carbon right here bonded to the bromine, would have a partial positive charge and would be a good electrophile. So it turns out most of the common electrophiles we'll see for much of the, the whole year of organic chemistry fall into these three classes. So on the last one here is this carbonyl carbon here. And this carbonyl carbon, again, also having a partial positive charge. Notice big fat dipole moment for that carbon oxygen bond. And so that carbonyl carbon often ends up being a great electrophile as well. So all of our electro electrophiles here uh, generally are electron deficient and have at least, at the very least, a partial positive charge, if not a full positive formal charge. So I want to take some time out and talk about uh, common intermediates in organic reactions. And carbocations here is a positive charge on a carbon atom, hence the name carbocation. Uh, don't read that as carbocation or anything of the sort. Uh, but a carbocation is a common intermediate we'll, we'll encounter, especially in this first semester of organic chemistry here. And what you see is that the more substituted the carbocation, the more stable here. And so we rank carbocations based on how many carbons they're bonded to. So we see this carbon right here is bonded to three other carbons, then it gets the rank tertiary, which we uh, abbreviate here with this three and degree symbol here. So some people say three degree, but you really should say tertiary here. Here's a secondary carbocation. Here's a primary carbocation. And here we have a methyl carbocation not bonded to any additional carbons. So, and it turns out, uh, the more substitute, the more stable, and it comes down to something we call hyperconjugation. So in hyperconjugation, there's a little bit of pi overlap here uh, with the p orbital on this central carbon. So this uh, carbon here has got a p orbital coming essentially out of your screen and into your screen. So, and for these carbons out here that are bonded to three H's, so we've actually got so some sideways overlap here between the p orbital and these sp3 hybrids that are bonding with the hydrogen atoms. And that lends a little bit of electron density back to this carbon, making it a little bit less positive and making this carbon on the outskirts a little more positive. So it's sharing the positive charge a little bit. Uh, the key buzzword here is hyperconjugation. If you're asked, why is a tertiary carbocation more stable than a secondary carbocation? Hyperconjugation is the answer. The next type of intermediate we'll see are radicals, and radicals occur when you have an, a single unpaired electron. And these follow the same trend as carbocations here. So in this case, with a single unpaired electron, there's no overall formal charge on that carbon, but we would still look at him as being electron deficient because he does not have a filled octet. And so the more carbon atoms he's bonded to, and again, these carbons are donating electron density towards that central atom by hyperconjugation yet again, uh, making it a little bit more stable. So kind of sharing that electron deficiency with the three outside atoms. So the more carbons he's bonded to, the more stable the radical. So it follows the same trend as carbocations. 
the last type of intermediate we'll look at here are called carbanions, and these are when a carbon has a negative charge, and carbon's got a negative charge, you'll see it has a lone pair of electrons and three bonds. So, and this is going to be much less common as an intermediate than either the carbocation or the radical, but we'll cover it at the same time here. We find that you've got the exact opposite trend in stability. Here you want the less substituted carbanion here. So in, instead of being electron deficient like a carbocation or a, or, or a radical, these carbanions are actually electron rich. They have too many electrons. And so the more carbons they're bonded to, which again can donate electron density towards them, the less stable they become. So we want them to be bonded to as few carbons as possible. So here the less substituted the carbanion, the more stable it becomes. Opposite of what we saw again with carbocations and radicals.